Welcome back to 101.5 FM. You are with Hamish and the kids from Maumee State School. You just heard Big Jet Plane by Angus and Julia Stone. Today we are very fortunate to be joined by Mr. Wyatt Roy, Federal Member for Longman and this year's host of the Longman Youth Leadership Forum. Welcome, Mr. Roy, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me on, and thanks for playing Angus and Julia Stone. I love that song. Okay. What does a typical day look like as a Member of Parliament? Well, there's no real typical day to be a Member of Parliament. There's always uh, how each person does their job is a little bit different, and um, what I do here is quite different to what I do in Canberra, but um, uh, often it's getting out talking to local people in the community. So I have 37 schools. Mount Me is one of those 37 schools. I spend a lot of time there. Uh, you know, Lions, Rotaries, Chambers of Commerce, I, I talk to them. If people have issues or troubles, they come to me and I try and help them with those issues. And then I spend almost half the year in Canberra as well, representing our community in the Parliament. So it's a, uh, it's a pretty busy job, but I, I really love this job. I'm very lucky to do it. Okay. Thank you. This weekend you're again hosting the annual Longman Youth Leadership Forum. What are the objectives of this forum and who will be involved? So I, I'm really excited about this. This is the second year that we've done the, the Longman Youth Leadership Forum. And uh, I, w I was thinking that, you know, often as a community, we like to uh, have a go at young people, but we don't, we don't like to champion them as much as we can. We don't like to celebrate, you know, the achievements of young people. And uh, uh, when I was uh, in high school, I did a youth leadership program with a, a very um, influential and exciting character called Bernie Kelly who runs leadership um, camps and, and also takes people away to Africa and to Tibet to do leadership and personal development. And I, I called up Bernie and I said, can you do the same program you did with me? Uh, we'll get local businesses to, to fund and support the program and we'll get kids from all the different high schools across the region to come along. So uh, last year we had about 20 or 30 people do the forum and it was a huge success. This year I'm really excited to say we have um, uh, about 60 students, uh, just over 60 students uh, from across the region coming along this weekend and we'll spend two days of doing youth leadership and personal development uh, and then at the end we're going to do a community sort of um, uh, to give back to the community by going out and planting trees at, uh, at Creek in Burpengary. So I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a great weekend and, and having done the program myself, I know it makes a really big difference in, in young people's lives. Okay. Um, what skills will young people come away with off the weekend? So probably um, the most important one is confidence in themselves. Uh, you know, we have, as human beings, we have amazing a potential to, to change the world for the better, but we just need to believe in ourselves and our ability to do that. Uh, we also, uh, well, one of the things that the program provides is an ability for uh, young people to mix with people that they might not otherwise mix with from different backgrounds, different walks of life and uh, different schools. Uh, so a real ability to grow um, together. Uh, and also uh, I think that uh, it's one of the one of the great benefits is, is just a, a, a way of getting along with people that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily have. It's quite a, a moving sort of weekend, but um, I'll try and leave a little bit of surprise for, for the actual weekend. But it's uh, it, it, people come out as a different person, I would say. They, they are much more confident in themselves and I think generally better people. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Roy. After the break, we will be continuing our interview with Mr. Wyatt Roy, Federal Member for Longman. But now we hope you enjoy the soothing tones of Waterloo by ABBA. Here we are in 101.5 FM studio with Mr. Wyatt Roy. As we promised, here are some more questions with today's guest. This weekend is the annual Longman Youth Leadership for Forum teaching kids how to become community leaders so we are wondering is there some in particular is there some in particular that you admire that you feel shows or has shown great leadership qualities well it's it's a really good question and uh, i think in life there's lots of people that you look up to but um probably the person that i look up t to the most uh it doesn't really have anything to do with my job or politics. It has to do with life and, and sort of just being a, a good person. And uh, my father 
uh, is one of the most hardworking people you will ever meet. He's a strawberry farmer and he grows uh, a lot of a lot of strawberries. Um, but um, he's he's a very compassionate, genuine person. He's very giving. Um, he he hates it when people recognise the fact that he's you know he's helping other people out. He doesn't want to be known for helping other people, but he does every single day. And probably the best thing about him, and this is the thing I try and remember most about my job. Um, he takes what he does very seriously. You know, it's a very, you know, it's an important job being a being a farmer. And I take what I do very, very seriously because what I do can fundamentally change people's lives. But he never takes himself too seriously. You know, he's quite happy to have a joke and a laugh and have a good sense of humour and uh, enjoy life. And uh, if I can be a little bit more like him, then I think I'd be a pretty good person. Do you think, in our current age of social media, that it is easier for people? particularly younger people, to become involved in social issues and programs they feel pas- passionate about? Um, I, I think so. You know, I think that one of the things that uh, our generation has as we're growing up is, is more connection to each other. We, you know, we talk to each other. We, we're on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, um, we are very, very connected, and we sort of know what's going on. And, and part of that is if there's a, a social issue that's important to people, if there's a, a cause that they want to fight for, it's very easy to talk to people about those issues because, you know, you can chat about it on Facebook, you can uh, talk about it online, and I think that um, it, it has created new avenues for people to get involved uh, and talk about the issues that are important to them. So I think that's a good thing when we're talking about the future of our country or our planet or our community. What issues are younger people doing in our elect- electric of young long men talking to you about what developments and changes in our community do they feel are important? Well, young people are like everybody else. You know, that their their issues are, are whatever it matters to them in their day to day life. So I don't I don't like generalising too much about um, different age groups. But I would say, you know, the young people that I talk to are are very aspirational. They want to get out there. They want to have a go. They want to try and uh, make a difference in their own lives and and those of the people around them. So they want to get a job. You know, that's something I talk a lot to young people about. They want to have job opportunities when they finish school or university or TAFE for an apprenticeship. Uh, they want to continue their education many of them so whether they finish school and they do an apprenticeship TAFE or university that's a really important issue um, you know I've got I've got mates of my own that commute to the city and they don't like the fact that a, a train ticket costs you know $22 to go to the city and you know the cost of living affects it affect them affect everybody else um, and then probably um, the other thing I would say is they want something to do you know, we're a growing region. We're one of the fastest growing areas in the country. Uh, and we need to sort of have a mature discussion about, well, what can you do locally? Can you live, work and play? Or do you just go to the city to work and do you go to the city to have a good time? Or can you, you know, go to a, a skate park or can you go to the beach here? Can you go uh, enjoy life locally? And I think that those are the big issues that people come and talk to me about. But young people have a lot to offer this country. They are very aspirational and I often find very inspirational and hardworking people. What do you think the barriers are for mainstream politic parties to show leadership in difficult policy areas such as gay marriage, the issues involving the health and in ed- educational outcomes of Aboriginal Australians and all the important issues of, of climate change? Well, there's, um, it's, a, it's a good point. It is not always easy when you are in politics to show leadership on particular issues, but you have to have con- convictions and know what you believe in as an individual. So I believe in certain things. So, you know, I, I think if you work hard, you should be fairly rewarded for that hard work. Uh, I think that you should be free to determine how you live your own life, not have the government tell you how you live your own life. Uh, uh, I believe that it's really good... If, if everybody in life has as close to equal opportunity as possible. So, you know, you have the access to, to good schools, you have access to good health care, and you talked about Indigenous health in the question. So those are the things that I believe in and I'd like to stand up for. But this job is more than just what I believe in. This job is far more than just my own personal views. We really are trying to facilitate a discussion. And sometimes leadership is not just telling people what you think or enforcing your own personal views. It's about making sure that other people can have their voices heard. So in the electorate of Longman, in our community, I represent 140,000 people. Now, those people are going to have different views on different issues. But what my job 
to do as much as tell people what I think. It's actually to make sure that they can tell me what they think, that I'm out there listening to them, that I'm out there facilitating discussion so that the whole community's voice is heard, not just my own, because I don't think that I'm particularly smarter or better informed than any one of those 140,000 people I represent. Join us after this short break for 10 fast facts fast facts about our guest today, Mr. Ra- White Roy. Welcome back, guys. You're here with Annabelle and the kids from Mount Me State School. Um, we have a very interesting interview guest with today's interview guest, Mr. White Roy, a federal member for the Longman and host of this year's Longman Youth Leadership Forum. Okay, Mr. White Roy, here we go with 10 fast facts about your, our guest today. Place of birth? Uh, I was born in Budrum, but uh, I grew up on the end of Roy's Road. My name's Wyatt Roy, so it's named after my family. Cool. Favourite place to holiday? Um, I love taking my boat over to Morton Island and uh, sort of hanging out with my mates uh, in, in at Tangalooma, basically, and staying on the boat or camping there if I can. Favourite colour? Um, liberal blue. I'm a liberal politician, so I'd say liberal blue. Number of brothers and sisters? I have two older brothers uh, and a younger sister who's just started university. Early riser or night owl? Um, I swap all the time. I used to be an early riser, but I'm finding in this job I'm becoming a bit of a night owl. (laughs) Favourite TV show? Um, There's an old show called Fast Forward, uh, which used to have Magnus Zabansky on it. It was like a comedy skit show. Very funny. I love Fast Forward when I can watch it. Favourite actor or actress? Uh, Russell Crowe. He does some great movies, uh, and Gladiator particularly is a very, very good movie. If you could do any job in the world with exception to being a politician, what would you? What would it be? Um, I always wanted to be a pilot, so I started to learn how to fly, so maybe a pilot. If you could invite anyone to dinner, who would it be? Um, I would love to have dinner with Richard Branson, who is the CEO of Virgin or the, the owner of Virgin. Uh, I think he's a very interesting person, very successful, and I'd love to have dinner with him. Have you ever spent an entire day in your pyjamas? You don't tell too many people, but yes, I think I might have. <laughs> probably didn't help me. You just announced it on live there. No, probably not. <laughs> thanks for joining us on the station today. No worries. Thanks for having me on, and well done, guys, uh, for giving me a, a grilling, and uh, you should be pretty proud of your efforts on the radio. Thank you. Um, that was a federal member, White, Mr. White Roo, on 101.5 FM. We're bringing more to Morton Bay Region. Coming up within the hour, we have our community announcements, Mount Me News, and a real challenge for our teacher. The time now is 1.31. You are listening to Hamish and Mount Me Radio Kids on 101.5 FM. It is now time for Mount Me Moves on the air and community announcements. Of course, everyone knows that this weekend is the annual Urban Country Music Festival, showcasing some of the best talent in country music today, such as Lee Kernigan, Troy Cassadaly, and John Williamson. You can pre-purchase tickets online or buy them at the gate. There are free tickets events on Saturday and Sunday in the village precinct, precinct between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. This includes the Songwriters Cafe, the Village Stage, Dusty Kids, the Butte Ute Competition, Stuckman's Arena, and more. Entrance to the Caboolture Historical Village will also be free all festival weekend. Mount Me markets are on this Sunday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come for a leisurely drive and enjoy the treasures found in the stalls and enjoy the delicacies in the country country kitchen. Markets are located at the Mount Me Community Hall. (laughs) Pull up your body socks and get ready to experience rock and roll bands. More than 350 pre-1979 vintage cars, roving entertainment, food and retro market stalls, rides in the evening final, a fireworks spectacular. Rod's Rock and Roll is a free family show with gold coin parking, free fee going towards the Rotary Club of Albany Creek. What are you waiting for? Rev up the engine and we'll see you on Saturday 25th of May at Pine Rivers Park, Strathpine. That's it for today's announcements. Keep listening to your favourite station at 101.5 FM. Now it's now time for Are You Smarter Than Your Teacher? Of course we are. Every every week we challenge our fabulous teacher, Lisa Chapman, with five questions about an, an unseen topic. Today's topic is wool. Good luck, Lisa. Uh-huh. I think you need it. Wool? You could have done anything better than wool. I'm waiting for music or plants. You know how much I love those. <laughs> What's the first question, Alicia? 
What famous nursery rhymes oh. rhyme is about sheep and wool? Well, it'll have to be Bar Bar Black Sheep. Correct. Oh, hallelujah. After being shorn from the sheep, what happens to the wool next? After the sheep is shorn, I know they throw it onto a table. That'd be right, wouldn't it? They throw it on a table. Is it A, washed to remove prickles, B, graded or classed to determine the quality of the fleece, or B, C, dyed to, ter- to the chosen colour? B, I think it is graded and all the prickles pulled out. Correct. <laughs> I'm doing well. I thought I'd do well on wool. <laughs> what two countries are most famous for the fine wool growing? Oh, I think that'd have to be cashmere. I think it is prized here in Australia. Would that be right, here in Australia? One and a half Australia and New Zealand. I had to pick two, did I? Okay, all right. What's that, three and a half so far? What's the next question? What breed of sheep grows the finest wool? Um, the sheep that grows the finest, Merino? Correct. How many legs does a sheep have? This is very oh, easy. My goodness, you guys you guys were easy on me this week. They have four legs. Correct. So your, so what did I get this week? Your score today was four and a half. Let's hope next time you get five. Oh, let's hope. Better luck, better luck next time, Lisa. That was Respect by Aretha Franklin on 101.5 FM. You're listening to... Hamish and the Mount Me Radio Kids, we are taking you right through to 2 p.m. As part of our Kids Speak section this week, we have been interviewing students from prep to year 7 on the topic. Do you think that physical education should last the whole middle session of school? And if so, why? Here are some responses. Thomas, year 7, said, Yes, because you get active, active and kids learn to like running. Freya, Year 6 said, yes, we get out of doing homework. Emily, year 5 said, yes, it's healthy and keeps kids fit. Hudson, year 4 said, yes, sport is good for you, keeps you fit, and it's always good to get out. Jeremy, year 3 said, yes, it's active and makes you fit. Lachlan, year 1 said, no, everyone would get too bored. Bradley, prep said, yes, it will make school more fun. Well, it's pretty well decided. All but one student wanted more played at school. Thanks for all those people who participated and gave their options. Stay tuned to 101.5 FM. And we will be right back after these songs. Hey, everyone. Um, welcome back. I'm Annabelle. Now, we have a very interesting piece of history about the about Mount Me history. So, here we go. Um Mr. Richard Thomas, who is 85 years of age, is a splendid example of the physical stamina of the class of men who pioneered Queensland. Though the, of such ripe years, he is still of a cheery dispo- disposition and able to walk without assistance. Wait till I get you in a chair, he said to the career representative who visited him. Mr. Thomas is an English man by birth and arrived in Queensland in 1862 by the sailing ship City of Brisbane. He still retains his facilities and is a constant reader like many young men. Younger men, he uses glasses and enjoys his pipe. He is never ready to talk about his knowledge of the early days of Queensland. In conversation, he spoke about having driven a bullock dray along Queen Street, Brisbane, and of having carted water for a hole near where the new t- town hall was being built. He was 74 years of age when he, when he was when he was dis- discontinued following the bullock wagon. His memory of the location of the streets of Brisbane, although one, although some years have el- elapsed since the city was visited in a clear. He was one of those attracted by the Palmer Gold Rush, but did not stay in Brisbane for a long period. Returning to Brisbane, he secured employment with Cobb & Co, working on the farm near Petrie for growing, for growing horse feed and catering, and catering the feed to the camps as far as north as west as Traveston. He left for Mount Me 50 years ago to engage in timber hauling, which he followed for many years. Should be taken with his old friend, Mr. H. Hewitt, who, with whom he has been associated with more, for more than 40 years. 
<coughs> Mr. H. Hewitt arrived in Queensland in England in 1876 by the ship Orfella, Orfelia. Shortly after the arrival, he made his way home at Nunda and just followed various occupations, chiefly working on roads north of Brisbane. He also was engaged on the Warwick Stanthorpe Railway construction. He went to Mount Me 44 years ago, having undertaken a contact from the late Mr. John Anderson to clear scrublands up for the Clane, for the cane plantations to supply Mount Me Sugar Mill, which was two years before that mill started on its short career. Subsequently, he turned his attention to timber hauling. He is now the owner of a large dairy herd which, improves, which comprises high-class cows and a pedigree bull. Although three score years and ten, Mr. Hewitt is still a constant worker, and when seen on leaving Mount Me, he, ha- he was out repairing his fences. In her young days, Mrs. Hewitt was on the staff of Queensland Education Department, having taught in schools at Maryborough, Pillarbar, Mount Me, their children and grandchildren reside at the district. So, um, sorry about, that was just a little, uh, bit of history about Mount Me. Um, next, um... So something up next, we have something to think about. So join us then. See ya. I mean, not see ya, obviously, but... Hello, everybody. You're back with Annabelle and Alicia and Amish. Um, so now we're going to give you our something to think about. Now, these are It's a riddle. We give you a riddle every week. Now, just remember, it is a mind challenge only. So here we go for today's riddle. I am not a human, nor am I an animal. I have eyes but cannot see, and I have hair that you cannot comb. My brown skin has several layers, but this seems a paradox, because one is smooth and the other is hard. My skin protects my soft white flesh, and within my flesh is my opaque blood. What am I? Alicia, do you want to take any guesses? I have no idea. Okay, well, the answer is a coconut, of course. Tricky, tricky IB. So, guys, uh, unfortunately, you we have come to the end of another great show. So, thanks for tuning in to 101.5 FM. Remember, if you have any comments or feedback, we would love to hear, you ab- hear about it. You can contact the 101.5 FM station through the website www.101.5fm.com.au or via email radio at 101. 101- 5fm.com.au The Mount Me Radio Kids will be back broadcasting next week for another brilliant and exciting show. Until then, bye! 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 Bye.